I've had a few people ask me how I position my dates along my perpetual calendar so that they are equally spaced around the perimeter of the circle. It probably isn't the fastest and easiest way, but it was the way that made sense to me when I was making this project. My first circle has a height of 10 inches. My second circle has a height of 8.5 inches. I'm putting one circle inside the other. I'm choosing a line, center, and slice. So this gives me the band that I'm going to put my numbers along. So I've already typed out the numbers that I want to put along the perimeter of my circle. They're numbered 1 through 12 for a clock. At this point, it'd be a good chance to choose the font that you want to use. I decided to go with the basic Cricut font. This rectangle represents the space that's allotted for each number that I put around my circle. So for the first thing I did was figure out how wide this rectangle would be to be able to place 12 of them along my circle. Their circumference of my circle is 10 inches times 3.1416, which is 31.416. And I know that I need 12 numbers, so that number has to be divided by 12. So if you divide 31.416 divided by 12, that gives you 2.6 inches so that I know that as long as the width of my rectangle is smaller than 2.6, then I can put all 12 numbers along. So I'm going to position it at 2.5. A little room for error there. And for the height, you can do it visually. So you know that your number has a maximum of 0 0.75. You're going to need 12 of these rectangles. So I'm just going to duplicate this shape until I have 12 of them. So now I have 12 of those rectangles. I'm going to also grab my numbers and I'm going to align, center them. And I want to shrink them down so that they fit comfortably within the height. We don't have to worry about the width because numbers are very narrow, but you want them to fit comfortably within the height of those rectangles. A height of 0.6 you've got a nice little margin on the top and the bottom. Then you just want to move your numbers so that they are on the top. And then you're going to grab the first one, align, center, group. And then you want to position it on your band, line, top, align, center horizontally. And then just to take a quick gander, you see that it's positioned properly. So then we're going to select everything and group. Next, I know that a circle is 360 degrees. I also know that since my clock has 12 equally distanced numbers, I have to divide 360 by 12, which gives me 30. So I know that I have to rotate this circle by 30 degrees and then I can put my next number. Now my next number on the clock would be 12. So align center group and then I want to align top, align center horizontally and see there's overlap between. So if this had been a longer label you would want definitely to make your rectangle smaller. Because the numbers are narrow, you don't have to worry about the width so much. The overlap doesn't matter. So we're going to align top, align center horizontally, and then group. And then we rotate another 30 degrees. Next number is 11, align center, group, align top, align center horizontally, and group again. And you just keep on doing that until you've placed all 12 numbers. So now I've finished placing all my numbers and I can just go into the layers panel here and just delete all my rectangles. Now, this is for a spinning wheel. You always want your number that's at the top to be right side up. If this were a clock, for number six for instance, would be upside down. You would want it placed like so. So if you decided that you like the positioning, but you don't like the fact that the number four is kind of upside down, you just go into flip horizontal, flip vertical, 
and now it shows like a regular clock. So it really depends on your project and what you want to do. And so that is basically how I did it. Now, there are probably easier and faster ways of doing this. I definitely did find some shortcuts along the way when I was doing mine, but this seems to work, especially for something as simple as a clock face.